Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Elias. I'm the CEO of EXA. Uh, EXA is creating energy efficient ships for AI that are reconfigurable to each AI model. Uh, so basically, in short, we're saving data centers uh, and compute clusters billions of dollars in both electricity costs and cooling costs. Um, and we were in the most recent YC batch, so we just graduated. Um, uh, but yeah, when it comes to AI in general, there's a lot of hype around LLMs and all of the new things surrounding it. But actually, it's an upcoming energy crisis when it comes to AI. So when it comes to compute clusters, you're actually consuming in the megawatt range uh, just to do some standard AI computation, which is rather not sustainable, if I'm going to be honest. For example, XAI, uh, I think this year, had to install uh, gas turbines outside of their data center because the grid cannot sustain it. Generally, if we continue down this path, uh, we won't be able to scale AI to such a level that we want to have it in the future. So AGI and ASI as well uh, literally won't be possible. So this energy crisis is either going to you know, leave us in an energy overconsumption state, or we're going to have a lot of regulation. So normally, when you're consuming too much energy and the politicians get a bit scared, you're going to go and regulate your, your compute clusters, basically. So that is something bad. So regulating computes is bad, because compute is also used within scientific discovery as well. So naturally, if you uh, start regulating uh, your computes as, as a society, we lose the ability to actually innovate even more. So one of the main reasons why AI was invented in the first place uh, was essentially to advance science, basically. Uh, it's more than your sentence and image generation. Uh, but we're actually approaching a sort of like an innovation death simply because we cannot sustain the current AI climate, uh, which is why um, also we have to do something about it, yeah. So actually mentioning scientific things, uh, I think that the next turning point in AI is scientific. So we've already had transformers and LLMs, but the future is actually like architecture agnostic. So you know when it comes to AI and actually having the models basically run better and learning your data set, you'll have to have architecture flexibility and you have to have the ability to embed priors. You can't just throw transformers at everything and expect it to work. So actually the next turning point will be scientific. The SaaS thing, as people keep saying, that's what they're doing, it will not stand for software, it will stand for science as a service. So the future is literally scientific machine learning. That is the most beautiful part of AI, since we can use AI to actually discover new equations. We can apply it to modeling the climate. We can apply it to cancer, protein folding. Like AlphaFold is a great example. Uh, if you guys have seen AlphaFold 3, uh, which just got open sourced by uh, Google, I think, uh, DeepMind. Uh, so generally, when it comes to AI, we actually are seeing that when it comes to the architectural uh, uh, of the models uh, is actually a bit more diverse. So when it comes to AlphaFold, for example, it is not only a transformer, it is an evil former. It is a special transformer. So you can't really just throw a standard ASIC chip as a custom-made chip uh, at the transformer. So generally, we're actually approaching this inflection point when it comes to innovation over time. Uh, and once we actually have these models, uh, or ability to train these models, uh, will actually uh, enter a golden age um, of building or of science, actually. So it will be the Renaissance again, but every broke kid in their parents' basement uh, could invent the new, the new state of the art model or discover the next equation in physics and win the Nobel Prize. Who knows? So, and in order for us to be able to do those things, we actually need architecture flexibility. So that's what we're making. So, we're making XPUs. So our ships are actually reconfigurable to each AI model. So the X is variable. Yeah, we, I know. We, we're great with names, right? Um, but essentially, this means that when it comes to compute in general, it must be decentralized. Because if you have, for example, GPUs and GPU clusters, they're draining so much energy that only the 
top of the top institutions have the resources to sustain them with energy and you know basically capital and money. Uh, but actually, if you want a future where people can discover or actually innovate more, like you know, just some random kid uh, at some university, some broke kid. Uh, we need to have compute to be decentralized. And having compute be a huge energy hog, like, I don't know if, I don't have a nuclear reactor in my basement. Uh, I don't know about you guys, who knows? Uh, but generally, we actually need to optimize the ships as well. And that's what, why we're doing polymorphic computing. Um, so actually, if we want to scale off the computing to essentially exascale uh, computing, uh, we actually need to have architectural flexibility in the hardware itself. So normally, if you have a GPU, uh, it basically follows a bunch of instructions, and it's a general purpose uh, computing unit. Uh, but what is actually needed uh, to these custom scientific machine learning models, basically, is we, we, need, we need hardware that is specific to it. So a solution to this is essentially, or, yeah, let's create custom ships for each model architecture. Let's create a custom ship for a transformer. Well, that was that. Like the AI industry is moving so fast that all of the current model architectures are essentially going to be redundant tomorrow. There's always a new AI paper coming out, and if we limit the researchers to only use transformers, like that's like just one percent of the market or one percent of the future like knowledge that we can acquire as a species. So generally, we want to enable them to actually innovate even more uh, and be even crazier when it comes to pure mathematics. And we actually need a sustainable uh, way of doing so. And that's why we're making uh, these XPUs, these uh, AI ships. Um, so generally speaking about like the current market or for AI ships is, I don't think we have to argue about it. It's, it's a couple of billion dollars, $351 billion. That's the entire gen AI thing. I sort of mentioned the SaaS thing becoming more of a science as a service instead of a software thing. I do believe in the future, people will discover new equations in physics, chemistry, and biology, and actually innovate more in science rather than just generating images. So the GenAI and SciML community combined actually with the underlying hardware uh, today would be a trillion dollar market. So generally that's literally what we're trying to do here. So we want to give researchers and just people working in AI, the ability to actually innovate and have their models be realized within the hardware as closely as possible. Um, because without it, we'll, we'll essentially reach a stagnation point when it comes to innovation. Um, and we actually need more innovation in, um, in science, especially in material science, if we want to uh, go to other planets and so on. Um, uh, but yeah, I think the future is essentially going to be like the renaissance again. And that is the most beautiful part. But if you don't have the underlying, underlying computing hardware, uh, we won't make it. And if the hardware itself can't adapt to the actual mathematical models you're using, uh, you're stuck with a general purpose computing system, which in salt is literally just inefficient, as we've seen with GPUs. Um, so I think the future is very bright. And that's why, generally, why we're working on this problem. And speaking of the future as well, um, we are actually launching our, our pilot program. So we're expecting to have a couple prototype ships ready uh, by next year. Uh, so we're looking for people who are doing something crazy in AI, something innovative, and something that's probably going to change the industry. So if you know someone, or if you have some portfolio company, or you yourself is building something cool in AI, uh, you can go to the QR code, or just go to our website. It's excellaboratories.com slash pilot. Um, we'd love to hear what you're building and hopefully give you some a lot of compute that's way more energy efficient than the standard GPUs. Um, but yeah, so that's us. We're EXA, uh, and we're making the EXA flop sustainable. That's the name. Thank you.